having a public hearing of the planning board today, May 27th, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. And pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or visual recording of this public meeting <coughs> or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. And we'll have a roll call and Mario Luciello. Present. And um, Gloria Pacheco. Present. John Ferreira. Present. Uh, Beth Andrade is absent this evening and I'm Cynthia Savigny. And go down to item number one. Adoption of a material amendment to the City of Fall River Central Market Housing Development Zone and Plan. The owner applicant is JNK Realty LLC. The location's at 1168 Highland Avenue and the assessor's lots are S-3-2. And we have Mr. Paola here to speak on this. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> um, good evening. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. But uh, essentially, um, my, for the record, my name is uh, Ken Fiola. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Bristol County Economic Development Consulting Group. I'm actually here on behalf of JNK Realty LLC, which is a partnership made up of uh, Bay Coast Bank and uh, Mr. Bob Karam. And we're seeking an amendment to the HDIP zone, um, as noted, um, for the uh, purpose of um, rehabilitation of the Adams House into uh, market rate and workforce housing uh, units um, as part of an overall housing development plan. Um, as you may recall, and I think everybody has a first-hand knowledge of the, the property itself, but essentially for uh, the listening audience or the viewing audience, um, the Adams House was constructed in 1898, and it was the only private charitable institution in the city specifically aimed at providing specialized housing and care for the elderly. Uh, the Adams House rep represented an important shift uh, that social welf welfare institutions underwent in the 19th and early 20th centuries from a prism model of uh, providing care for the elderly to a more specialized form of institutional care. Recognizing the need for elderly care, Robert Adams and his wife Lydia Ann Stowe donated a choice parcel of land on Highland Avenue upon which the Fall River Home for the Aged was constructed. Um, JNK Realty LLC actually purchased the property about two, two years ago and had been looking at various uh, types of redevelopment scenarios for the reutilization of that property itself. Um, they determined that they would like to be able to preserve that antique structure, um, given the fact that it is on the uh, historic register, uh, both on the, um, the, uh, the state and local as well as the federal levels. Uh, but it, the, pro the property itself is a little bit challenging in terms of what you can actually do with it. And even though the entire Adams House property comprises an entire city block, uh, they went before the Zoning Board of Appeals um, last year to get a variance so that they have some four single family house lots on the property, but they maintain the largest portion of the use of that property for the Adams House. So if you can visualize how the Adams House looks now, and if you're looking at it directly, to the right of the Adams House, there'll be one house lot on Highland Avenue, and then there'll be three house lots uh, going down, um, is that Adam, Adam, is it Adam Street? Adam Street or Stewart, yeah, Adam Street. I think it's Adam Street. Um, so that the, the Highland Avenue um, perspective will be pretty much intact. Parking for the facility will be in the back as it currently is, as, as you're looking at it now. So their proposal essentially calls for them to construct um, 34 units of housing um, within the facility. 
Um, they will be working with um, the city to secure, hopefully, if this gets approved by or referred to the city council by the planning board uh, and approved by the, the planning board, they'll be looking to, to secure HDIP tax credit financing for the project. Uh, the HDIP tax credit financing consists of a local tax savings as a result of the new value that's being created in Adams House, but it also makes them eligible for a tax credit from the state as it pertains to the creation of these market rate units uh, within the uh, within the facility itself. I guess the alternative to this to, to this plan would be the demolition of the property, the demolition of Adams House itself, uh, which I think from a historical perspective um, as well as a, a social perspective would be a loss for the city. I think you know there's been a great efforts made by um, the Historical Commission, the Preservation Society, and other groups uh, throughout Fall River to save these precious historic uh, buildings, especially the ones that can be saved. Uh, this one can, in fact, be saved, uh, but in order to save it, they need to move it from a residential care facility into a market rate housing uh, facility um, that will, like I said earlier, would consist of the 34 units there. So um, it's not going to be a um, there's going to be a significant amount of money that's going to be invested in this conversion process. Um, you know, just just in terms of uh, environmental remediation, they're looking at close to five hundred thousand dollars right now, just for the um, remediation of the asbestos that's within the building itself. So you start adding asbestos remediation along with your other cost of residential development, appliances, bathrooms. Um, HVAC, you, you know, uh, centralized HVAC, and other types of improvements to the property, you know, the price tag really gets up there. So they're hoping that the planning board will look uh, favorably upon this and allow for this project to be referred to the city council for further action. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions for me? No, no, no question. I read it. Practically, I read everything in the paper. Seems to be question that I had. The paper says 32 housing, and you mentioned 34. Is that? Yeah. So it's, it's fluctuated a little bit from 32 to 34 based upon the uh, the final design. So at the time, the letter was actually submitted before the planning board. We were looking at 32, but now they're looking at a potential of 34. And also those lots you mentioned, four lots. That's all included in the package. That's separate. Those will be sold off as uh, separate okay. parcels of land. Thank you. And it's probably going to be, um, I believe there's also going to be some sort of uh, design or, or design restriction on the Highland Avenue residents so that it blends into the balance of the homes that are on Highland Avenue themselves. So you're not going to put um, a smaller house or a raised ranch on that Highland Avenue piece. It'll have to be something of, of more stature. So it, it complements the existing housing in that area. Very good. Thank you. On this map yep. right here where we have it highlighted where we're looking to um, have the proposed addition, it's kind of cut out this way. Why didn't it, the HDA go straight down Highland Avenue? So when the, when the original, and we actually put this HD zone together mm -hmm. when it first started, the regulations when the HD program first came out are different than they are now. When the HD zone uh, regulations first came out, you had to mix and match different census tracts so that you would be able to have five contiguous census tracts that reflected an area of town that had demographic demand for the development of market rate housing. The little indentation that you see here, yeah. you know, so why the reason why we didn't go all the way down there is that's probably part of a different census tract, the, that two block area from a Harvard Street over to Hood Street. Mm -hmm. That may be the, the boundary of a different census tract that would have upset the equation when we were trying to put the census tracks together to meet the state's criteria. Can I ask a question? Of course. Thank you. Um, 
You mentioned, uh, Ken, I think one of the uh, single family houses that would front on Highland Avenue, there were going to be some restrictions imposed so it would blend to the neighborhood. Are those uh, deed restrictions? I that believe they're going to be deed restrictions, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And, um, it's a good idea. I know that the developers have met with all the abutting neighbors up there to go over the plans themselves. Yep. Anything else? Yes. I can. Um, just curious. I know you said 32 to 34 units. How many parking areas are you uh, contemplating? Um, so there pro there's probably enough parking for at least uh, two spaces per unit. Two per unit? Yeah. Yeah. There won't be any on-street parking necessitated. Um, most of the units, I think right now the conventional breakdown that we're looking for at right at this point now uh, the uh, 23, um, 23 one-bedroom units, um, nine two-bedroom units, and two um, two-bedroom, two-bath units. Okay, how many one-bedrooms you say? 23. 23. 23. Yeah. yeah. So those could be one or one and a half right, spaces. Yeah. 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 No, just yeah. So there won't be smaller, smaller the bedroom size and smaller usually the uh, call for the yeah. The and don't forget at, at, during its heyday when you had uh, staff and also um, residents and visitors there, you know there were times there where you easily had close to a hundred cars on site there between everybody. So I'm familiar with it. My mom spent a couple of months there and uh, does need uh, some serious uh, rehab. It does. It's a beautiful building. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you would never build a building of that quality or layout today. Yep. You know, if you, the nurse, the, the, um, the building itself is, the, the units are long and narrow. Correct. Not even long, but they're narrow. Mm -hmm. The hallways are wide right. so that you could get, you know, elderly people could get around, mm -hmm. strollers, wheelchairs, and everything else. So when you're rehabbing this type of property and in order to take advantage of your federal and historic tax hallway. credits, you can't close in that hallway. You've got to maintain the width because that was part of the original design. So these units here are going to be a narrow and long as opposed to wide. So that's why the design configuration is a little bit challenging, but they've been able to do it. They've got a great architectural firm um, from Providence that helped them through this process. Um, and they're also very close in securing um, their federal historic tax credit allocation. How wide are the typical I units going to be? Uh, gee, I don't know offhand. Um, you know, I, I'd have to, yeah. yeah, I'd have to go back. But the probably units are probably going to range anywhere from the one bedrooms, probably anywhere between probably average close to 700 square feet. And the, you know the so everybody the, the 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 next normal question at least from people I hear within the community is what's the demand for these units right so I can tell you um, you know we we did our first project mockery housing project um, at Commonwealth Landing which was 103 units and that leased up very quickly and there's probably a close to a 60 to 75 person wait list there. The second one we helped facilitate was the old LB file uh, mill building at the end of Alden Street, which is 100 units there, and those are all filled with a waiting list. Tony Cadero just finished two projects over here, one on the corner of um, Pleasant and Troy Street, and the other one here on 30, thir uh, 33rd Street, which is the building right across from uh, the post office where Giorgio's restaurant used to be. Um, on the Troy and Pleasant Street property, he's got 20 units there. Uh, my last conversation with them is that, and they've only been on market for a couple weeks, that most, uh, I think he's got close to 14 of those units already under agreement. And once 33rd Street becomes available, I think those will lease up as quickly. So there's a tremendous demand, you know, out there for these types of units. And rents range from $1,228 for a one-bedroom unit up to $1,900 for a two-bedroom unit. So the old adage that you can't get rents in Fall River, I think, is uh, slowly falling by the wayside. But what these, do, what these types of units do offer are off-street parking, security, HVAC, and the modern amenities that people are looking for 
in apartment residential living today. So, and you're just going to see, you know, with the onset of the uh, commuter rail coming forth in 2023, you're going to see additional projects coming forward for the development of of uh, market rate and workforce housing units. And I should say, of these units, there's going to be nine workforce housing units in here. They so those will be at the current rates. Those are 12.28 a month, uh, which represents 80% area median income uh, for this area. Any more questions from the board? I'm good. Kenny, no. No. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we uh, we approve this, and I believe we're forwarding this back to the city council. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? No one. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Stay yes. safe. <clears throat> Item number two: We have approval of the minutes of the February twenty fourth, twenty twenty meeting. Um, I make a motion that we approve. Everybody has a copy. Yes. I second the motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'll check it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we appear to have no one else for public input. Unless, unless you'd like to say something. <laughs> that, <laughs> we're not going to let you talk. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you. I make motion to adjourn. Second. I, I second. Very good. Done. We, we are adjourned. <laughs>